thank you, Jesus, today for your love, your mercy, your grace. And God, we do when magnify you. Bless the Lord. Oh, Jesus. Every day and night, never-ending praise. Jesus. May our incense rise. Oh, God, we thank you today. Go ahead and love Jesus today. Give him glory. Give him honor. Tell him that you love him. Magnify him now. We thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Our God is worthy of all of our praise and adoration. Amen. Don't be afraid to worship the Lord. Don't be afraid to give him glory and honor. We get all excited for all kinds of things, but you know what? I believe that we can worship our Jesus. Amen. Amen. At this time, the brethren are going to come to help us to receive our Sunday morning worship offering, our Sunday morning tithe. You give us unto the Lord. God will bless you as you give to him. We worship God with our praises and we worship God with our giving. So today, let's worship God with our giving. We do pay our tithe. And if you don't understand tithe, please come and talk to me about it. And we do give offerings as unto the Lord. We can give online at myntcc.org slash junctioncityks, which is our website. There's an online donation button there. And then also on Cash App, dollar sign NTCC Junction City. Or just give cash, whatever, whatever convenient for you. But most of all, let's give to God. And that's how God's program works. And the, the offering doesn't all come to me. There's, uh, there's needs in the house of the Lord. Amen. But we don't just give because of that. We give because we love our God and what God has done for us. And so today, God bless you as you give abundantly from your heart to God and to his work. Amen. And let's not forget our pledges. Some of you have pledges. Don't forget your pledges. All right. Brother Jim, so would you please pray? Ask God to bless the gift and the giver. Amen. Amen and amen. I sincerely thank you for your giving and may God bless you abundantly for it. And really from my heart, we are very, very thankful for those that are faithful in their support of the work of the Lord here. Amen. amen. Kids are off to Sunday school. I think I'll go join them, all right? No, I'm kidding. And then you have to listen to Reverend Myers preach to you. How does that sound? And if he goes to Sunday school, then my wife can preach to you. You ought to be thankful sometimes she doesn't preach to you. Amen. God is good. I'd like to read to you this morning from the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15 and 16. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Caleb, turn number one down just a little bit, please. Just, just a couple tick marks. There you go. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. I believe that we can praise our God, all right? I just spoke about that just a bit ago. Verse 16. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Then I'd like to read to you from the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Very familiar portion of scripture. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, 
that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And I'd like to speak to you this morning for just a little while on the title of a message, Forget Self. Forget Self. Reverend Myers here, please pray. Amen. Also, we do, uh, we do welcome uh, Brother Ryan. Brother Ryan is in Germany right now. He's watching. And also, Brother uh, Duhai over in the Ukraine, he's watching also. So pray for those folks that are gone. Amen. We live at a time when self has become the modern God. Never before had we have such an era of so much self-indulgence. How many know what I'm talking about? All you have to do is look at all the self-help books that are the big sellers and many times they're on the top 10 bestseller lists. All kinds of exercise programs and gyms have sprung up for those who want to rebuild their bodies. The great load of counseling today demonstrates also a great movement towards understanding self. Also, the lack of concern for one another in our society shows how much we have turned inward towards self. Sometimes it seems like, now, it does, now this is not all the time, but sometimes people only care about themselves. They don't care about other people. And this obsession shows up in broken marriages and, and also the demands by various groups to have equal rights no matter their lifestyle. The pampering of our culture is making the individual experience the ultimate thing. We are absolutely living in the age where everyone does that which is right in their own eyes. And that's what the Bible says. People don't care about other folks. I'm going to do what I want to do. It doesn't matter about everybody else. I'm going to live the way I want to live. I understand there is, we do have to take care of ourselves, but understand in the broad spectrum of it all. And we can find that this has happened before in the history of the world. And, and it really shows, in many ways, the way people avoid commitments so they can be free. I am free. You know what? I'm free this morning. I've been made free by Jesus Christ, right? How many have been set free by the blood of Jesus? But yet they say they are free and they don't want to make any commitments. I have no problems committing myself to the Lord. Can all the Christians say amen to that? It's ironic that in a world obsessed with self-fulfillment, the people are so empty. The only way to fill that emptiness is with Christ. And we all know that as Christians, because we've come to that place where we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, and we realize that we were once empty, but now we can be filled with the love of God. Praise the Lord for that. But yet, here we are, everybody's striving to take care of themselves, but yet we find they are empty. True self-fulfillment comes when people, and when we forget self, not when we indulge self. Now, now I want you to understand that what I'm getting ready to say in this message today, that we, we do have to take care of ourselves, but at the same time, look at it in the right way, approach it in the right way, Listen in the right way, because we're not here to indulge in self. We are here to forget self. And it's in the nature of life to, to put oneself first. But the Bible teaches us that when we receive our new nature in Christ, when we get saved and that old man, that old woman of, of sin is put to death, that we are to put self last. We are no longer going to indulge in self, but now we are going to follow Christ because we have a new nature and we are called to forget self. If we really want to find ourselves, we have to forget self. And so the first thing that I want to talk about, we, in Hebrews chapter 13, we see the sacrifice. Now we are thankful for the sacrifice of Christ, correct? But now we read there about these Pharisees. And the others that took great pains to follow rituals. 
to create a sense of salvation through all their personal lives filled with selfish, selfish indulgences. Uh, they were not right. These Pharisees, they, they wore the special robes. They looked good on the outside. But underneath those robes were the same wicked sinners uh, they condemned m many others uh, about in their speeches. Uh, there they were. Oh, they look so good. But underneath those robes uh, were people that needed to get saved, that needed a reality in Jesus. And I want you to know the same thing happens today. People may look good on the inside, but you know what? I'm not preaching a, a religion today. I am preaching a reality and a relationship in Jesus Christ. They even had these boxes. These boxes with scriptures, verses folded inside of them on their foreheads and on their arms. But yet they didn't practice those verses in their private lives. They were careful to wash their hands. That's good to wash your hands. But they were careful to wash their hands according to the law of Moses. But yet their hearts and their minds were dirty. They were strict about worshiping on the Sabbath. But they got angry with Christ when he healed the sick on the Sabbath. And they thought that no one should do work on the Lord's day. Even the good works like healing people. They were careful about presenting sacrifices in the prescribed way. But yet they would not sacrifice themselves for others. I want you to understand something very important this morning. All the rituals in the world will not make you spiritual no matter what kind of denominational structure they're found in. Rituals do not save us. Amen. You can go through the motions of anybody's rituals and still not experience real spirituality. So let's break it on down to where we're living at. You can come in here on Sunday morning you can come, you can sing, you can give in the offering, you can clap your hands, raise your hands, bow your heads here in this place and not be spiritual. And you say, well, we don't have rituals. Well, we don't necessarily call them rituals, but we do, we have an order of service that we follow, right? We come in, we pray, we sing, we give, and then we listen and we pray and then we leave. But that does not make you spiritual. We have to give ourselves to the Lord. Can someone say amen? amen? And so people that depend upon rituals miss the fruit of real sacrifice. Let me tell you something. Jesus made a better way for us than just rituals. Uh, again, a reality and a relationship in Jesus is what's needed, correct? So we know that Christ, I'm talking about the sacrifice. He sacrifi sacrificed himself for us. Thus, he gave us real righteousness and not rituals. He made a way for us to have a relationship with him. And, and God, God is not concerned about, all, there are things that we have to be concerned about, but he's not concerned about the rituals. Uh, he's not concerned whether I'm kneeling or standing or sitting when I pray. He's not concerned about all that. What's concerned about is how we humble ourselves before him and how we give ourselves to him. Uh, somebody asked me, how, how can I thank God for what he's done for me? Uh, I just want to do something. How can I show my love and appreciation to God? I said, live for him. Uh, walk uprightly before him. Uh, dedicate your life to him. That's how we can show thanks to our God for dying upon a cross for our sins. How many are thankful for the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ? Christ demonstrated the way to the fulfillment of self. How? The sacrifice of self. Christ died to self long before dying upon the cross. He showed us the way of joy and of peace. Remember the time in the garden, praying before his crucifixion. He died to self. He said, Father, not my will, but thine be done. He surrendered himself to the will of the Father. And what a wonderful example that we have. I believe that every one of us, we need to surrender ourselves to the will of the Father. But too many times, let's be honest, self gets in the way. Can I get a witness? Self gets in the way. Self does not want to. Now don't look at me like this doesn't apply to you because I understand. I understand self, all right? I've been fighting self a whole lot longer than some of you have. And we don't want, we don't, we know, we want God to fit within our prescribed schedule. We want God to fit into what we want. But let me ask you the question. When's the last time he asked God what he wants? He said, Father, 
He said, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But if not, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. What a wonderful place to surrender that Jesus showed us as he died to self. And let me tell you something. One of the hardest things to do is to quit smoking. No. To quit drinking. No. To quit gossiping. No. The hardest thing to do is to give up self. To give up self. It goes against the strongest desire of our being. Because self-preservation is what we're after. Jesus did away with the rituals of sacrifice. And he showed us a better way. The giving of self as sacrifice. Killing of animals for the sacrifices. You know what? Didn't cost man very much. But it cost the animals everything. Right? So they were supposed to bring the animals the way that God had prescribed. And, and it didn't cost man a whole lot. But you know what? It cost the animal everything. And when Christ gave himself, it cost everything. Because he gave himself for us. He gave himself for me. He gave himself for you. That we may be here today to worship him in spirit and truth. And knowing that one of these days we're going to go to heaven. Not because of anything that we have done. But we've been saved by the grace and the mercy of almighty God. Not of works lest any man should boast. And that means that we should rejoice in the Lord. Amen. He gave himself for us. In other words... Jesus was real. And the animals were only rituals. As Christians, we are called to be real sacrifices for the kingdom. Not just a token of sacrifice, but the real thing. I read a story about a young man. He worked very, very hard. And he's working for that time where he and his fiance could get married. And this was a long time ago. And the day came when he was traveling by train to get his fiance to marry her. While on the train, there was a sudden shudder. They're going up a hill. Near the peak of the steep hill, there was a shudder on the train. And he got up to see what happened. And he noticed a car that he was riding in had somehow become disconnected from the rest of the train. Unfortunately, it was on the upside of that steep mountain. And now the car was beginning to reverse and go back down the mountain all alone. There are a lot of people on the car with him. And the man knew because he had worked for this railroad at one time, and he knew that at the bottom of this mountain, there was a sharp curve, and by the time they would get there, they'd be going too fast to stay on the track. So he climbed on top of the car, trying to call, he climbed into the car and tried to calm the passengers. He tried to pull the handbrake. Even the handbrake on the car did not work. They were moving too fast, and the car was not slowing down. He then remembered his favorite verse of scripture. Greater love has no man than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. This young man had everything to live for. Everything to look forward to. He jumped down on the tracks and he used his own body to create the extra drag needed to slow the car down. It worked. Everybody lived except him. He sacrificed himself for everyone else. What a story. What a story. Now, I'm not saying that we have to give our life, but we have to be willing to live a life of sacrifice. Jesus didn't come just to teach us the right way, but he came to show us the right way. He is the example that every one of us need to follow. This means that we need to sacrifice self. Christ's sacrifice was not just a token. He forgot self so that you and I could be saved, that we could be restored, that a way for heaven could be made for you and I. And he didn't just preach about self-sacrifice. He demonstrated it. And I'm going to tell you right now, those of us that name Jesus as our Savior, we are called to be like our master. Jesus is our master. And we are called to be like him. No, we want a warm, fuzzy feeling on Sunday morning. We want to hear about sacrifice. We want to hear about inconvenience. But we are called to follow our master. And we cannot live a selfish life and call ourselves Christians. I think a lot of Christians are selfish. Oh, we know what to say. We know how to smile. 
We knew, all, we, we knew how to do all these things. But deep down, we're selfish. Christianity will not be any different from most of the world's religions if we do not practice self-sacrifice. The sad thing is, a lot of Christians think they do so much for God. And really, what are we doing for God? What are we doing for the Lord? The world is good at rituals. And the Christians must be good at real sacrifice. Christ showed us the way. Again, I'm going to ask you how many are thankful for Jesus. You say, well, I sacrificed by coming to church this morning. This is not a sacrifice. It's a blessing. All right, so we saw the sacrifice, which is Christ. Now we're going to look at a sacrifice. Jesus showed the way by keeping the sacrifice. We should become a sacrifice. Christ's sacrifice was redemptive. It was for others that he died to self. So then we are called to be a redemptive people, thus to sacrifice self for others as well. Now, to forget self is not an easy task. Come on, now, how many are going to be honest with me this morning? I may not be preaching at 100 miles an hour this morning, but you know what? We need to get these things squared away in our life. To forget self, because no, no, no. The Bible says every man's ways are right in his own eyes. Right? But the Lord looks at your heart. So we have self. To forget self is not an easy task. It requires humility to become a servant to serve. Let me tell you something, which I've noticed over the years, and it's changed a lot. Most do not want to serve. They want to be served. Wow. They want to be served. You look for people to do something, it's always the same three, four, five people that will do things. And everybody else just, and we shouldn't be surprised about that because it even happened to Jesus in the Bible. But think about it, uh, I love when people come to say, hey, pastor, what can I do? What can I do for God? Is there something I can do? And praise God for those that step up to make it happen. And everybody else is like, oh no, you're supposed to serve me. I believe we all to be servants, correct? But, but what is your attitude? There's a story of a student at a Bible college in Asia. And this student, he became disturbed over the condition of the men's restrooms, since they always seemed to be neglected in the cleaning routine. When nothing was done to solve the problem of the filth, he went to the principal of the school and he complained. A little while later, he noticed that things had changed for the better. And one day he found out why. He noticed that the man with the mop and pail each day was the principal himself. Later, this student commented, I thought that he would call a janitor, but he cleaned the bathrooms himself. He said it was a major lesson to me on being a servant. And of course, it raised a question in my own mind as to why I hadn't taken care of the problem. How are you serving? It never ceases to amaze me sometimes where, now, I've cleaned lots of toilets. And I'll probably still keep cleaning toilets, swept lots of floors, mop lots of floors. And I don't have a problem with that. I'll do it. People know who, who know me know I do that. Can I get a witness, right? But it never ceased to. One time, one time I, I was doing something, and, and I was with my pastor, and, and I had a shovel. We were doing that. We, this, this new church. We was out there digging, and, and uh, he called me over. He said, what are you doing? Well, we're digging over here. He said, uh. And these soldiers were just standing there. This is at Fort Lewis, Washington. These soldiers were just standing there doing nothing, watching me shovel. He said, give them one of the shovels. And I was trying to lead by example. I said, well, I, I can do it, Pastor. I, said, so I got it. He said, would you let me shovel? I said, absolutely not. I'd walk over to my pastor and say, sir, give me that shovel. And he had to tell me vehemently no for me not to do it. And so I went over and gave the shovel to somebody else. He said, let them do it. Let them get a blessing. Not that we were above it. The thing about it is people will watch you work. Some people have no problem with work. They'll just stand and watch you do it. I've been times where I, I, was, I was cleaning a bathroom one time. Right? I was the pastor, and I don't have a problem with it. Right? I'll do what I have to do. You think I'm complaining, but I'm not. I'm trying to make an illustration. And these steps are right there by the bathroom door, and I had a bag of trash from the bathroom. And the guys that made the mess were living there, 
And I had the trash sitting there on the step. They were walking by, stepping over the trash bag to get upstairs. So the phrase became, it's all right, don't worry about it. The maid will get it. I was calling myself the maid. So, and the thing about it is, why don't we just do it together? So here's a question. Self, I'm not doing the trash. It's not mine. I didn't make the mess. Well, we are servants, are we not? A sacrifice. It's not easy to forget self. It's not easy. We have to figure these things out and approach it. And so then when you do it, then when you do something like that, don't look for a bunch of accolades of man because we're not doing it for man. We're doing it as unto the Lord. And some people, they're, they're so wrapped up about them, them, and them, and them, and them. Living for God, working for God, doing things for God becomes a, a drag and it becomes a, 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 an inconvenience. And, and it should not be an inconvenience. And if it's an inconvenience to do something for the Lord, you need to check out your salvation. Because I believe that God has saved us. And I'm thankful. How many are thankful you're saved? Well, 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 people are an inconvenience. Well, they might be an inconvenience, but they're souls that Jesus died for. And we want to be a blessing. Amen. It's a redemptive role that we are called to do. God, what can I do to help someone get to heaven? Now, we don't save them. We don't deliver them. But by living a life like Christ, we can show them this is what it's all about. We want you to go to heaven. We want you to be blessed. We want you to do the right things. Amen. Simply following rituals does not do anything for God. Only those things we do that involve real sacrifice make a difference. I know you may not like this, but it's a fact, right? These kinds of sacrifices Jesus is pleased with have nothing to do with sacrificing animals. It has to do with giving up self. God is not interested in dead sacrifices. He wants living ones. I read it to you already. What is a sacrifice? Something that you give up. We are called upon as Christians to forget self and to offer up self as a real sacrifice. This is pleasing to God. And this is our reasonable service to God. And Paul says in his writing there in, in Romans that we are to do this. The only problem with a living sacrifice however, is that they have a tendency to crawl off the altar when the heat is applied. Here we are, I'm a living sacrifice. I'm doing good. Oh, I have all the blessings of the Lord. God is good. Well, life begins to heat up a little bit. The commitment has to be a little bit harder. Then we tend to crawl off that altar and say, I'm not doing this. Well, let somebody else do this. Because it's now an inconvenience. Now, there are times that I've had to pray this because you do things, and if you're not careful, you get a hard heart. <laughs> Amen? But when we realize what Jesus has done for us, it makes our heart stay soft. There's a story about a man by the name of David Livingston, and he penetrated the heart of Africa with the gospel. And he received a letter from the Mission Society with the following quest, following request. Have you found a good road to where you are? If so, we want to send you men to join you in the ministry. He replied back to the society. If you have men who will come only if they know there's a good road, I don't want them. I want men who will come if there is no road at all. That is sacrifice to self. Now we want to be blessed. How many want to be blessed? All right, we have a God of blessing. Amen for that, right? But we want it on our terms, and we don't, want to, we don't want to be put out. We don't want to be required of anything. We don't want commitment. We want God on our terms. Am I right? As long as it doesn't cost me anything, preacher, I'm good. No, wait a minute. Sacrifice. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I read it to you already. Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. In this verse, we see the sacrifice we're talking about. And it, these are not even my words. These are the words of God. This is what we need to do, presenting ourselves. What kind of sacrifice are you and I giving to our God? Now, you think, and you remember, I know I said it already, how God has done all these things for us. Man, it, it should cause us to, to say, God, here am I. I like when, when Saul 
met Jesus on the road to Damascus. He later on became Paul. He said, Lord, he said, what will you have me to do? He said, well, pastor, I want to do things, but I can't do a whole lot. Start out small. Do something for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Well, what, 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 what can I do? There's a lot of things that could be done. Sometimes it's just not the job that you want. It's not what you want to do. Again, sacrifice of self. And then, in Romans 12 and 2, we see a renewal. All right, so we're going to present ourselves as a living sacrifice. And then he said, and be not conformed. Don't be like this world. But be transformed, changed, correct? By the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know what? It's not going to be an easy task to forget self. The mentality of the world is contrary to doing so. The pattern of the world is to put self first. So how, how do we hope to accomplish the task of forgetting self? It is going to take a transforming process of our thoughts. There's a lot of people that have a problem with their thoughts. They don't think correctly. They're, they're negative. They're never positive. Mm. Change our thinking. Change our thought pattern. Jesus' example and the Word of God are the vehicles for transforming our thinking. And the Holy Spirit is the power behind the process. Until we start thinking differently from the world, our behavior will not be any different. I'm going to say it again. Unless we start thinking differently from this world, our behavior will not be any different. Let me tell you, my friends, this is so paramount in our lives. We need to change what's going on right here. And when we change what is going on here, it's going to change in our behavior. And sometimes your behavior doesn't change because you've not allowed the Spirit of God to change your mind. Getting saved, giving your life to God, surrendering to the Lord is a good start, the right start. And today, today, if you've never given your life to Jesus, this is a great day to say, oh man, I'm going to ask God to come into my life. And I know that if I call upon the name of the Lord, I can be saved, I can be forgiven. You get a right start, a fresh start, that salvation in Jesus. And and then we begin to study God's word and we begin to transform our behavior. Amen. We are new creatures in Christ Jesus, correct? Amen. At least we're supposed to be. He said, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, salvation, we come to God. All right, we realize that we're sinners. We realize that Jesus died for us. He rose again on the third day. His blood is shed for many for the remission of sins, the Bible tells us. And we ask Christ to come into our heart. God, I admit I'm a sinner. God, I admit and I ask you to come into my life to save me and to forgive me. That's a great start. That's what you need to do. He said in John, he said, you must be born again. And that's how you get born again, by accepting Jesus into your life. But salvation, when you get saved, is not an automatic cure for all of our behavior issues. What am I saying? Just because you got saved. Now, that's the right thing to do. We're not automatic. We got to work on things. Amen? And so these become a part of the process of God's spirit, renewing our minds. Thus, over time, we're living for God. Now, we said, God, come into my life. Now, that's a start. We we're forgiven, clean slate. But now we have to change our behavior. But sometimes people don't change their behavior. So my thinking is, if there's been no change in behavior, there's probably been no meeting with Jesus because we desire to be pleasing to the Lord. Don't you desire to be pleasing to God? I believe that because you're here this morning. Transformation is only possible where renewal of our minds take place. All right, so all of our life we've been programmed to be a certain way, if you will. Things are pumped into our brains. Now we come to God... We realize what God's done for us. We ask him to know our life. Well, now we have to rewrite this thing in our brain, right? We have to have a, a renewing, a transforming. That's what we need to allow God to do in our life, correct? And this shows us the importance of even training children in the right way so they know that they can have kingdom thinking already. And that's what we need to have as Christians, kingdom thinking. We need to change our thinking. 
The Word of God says it this way, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Do you know you can either have a good day or a bad day depending upon what you're thinking? Do you know you get up in the morning and ruin your day by the way you're thinking? Stupid Fort Riley. I can't wait. No, Pastor, but that's the truth. Is Fort Riley really that bad? No, the baby said yes. <laughs> what do babies know? So, seriously, you know what? There's good things about Fort Riley. Can I get an amen? And there's bad things about Fort Riley. Ryan, help me out. Not Ryan, but um, Logan, help me out, right? It's 99% bad. Nah, see. No, it's not. It's not. It's our thinking, is it not? I was just talking to someone about that yesterday. And, and they concurred with what I was saying. And, and the thing about it is, everything is not bad. Amen? Amen? And the thing about it is, we have to change our mind. Well, you can't live for God. You can't make it. You'll, you always have to sin. You always have to give in. No, you don't. Let God transform your thinking. And so when we say you can't do it, you're calling God a liar. Because the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And we need to allow God to strengthen us. Can someone say amen? amen. I can't do it, God. You're a liar. That's what you're doing. You're calling God a liar. God is not a liar. God tells us the truth. And when you do what God wants you to do, God will help you to have a better day at Fort Riley. That's easy for you to say, preacher. You're not in the military. Well, I was in the military, okay? It can be quite a powerful thing when we think like Jesus. And it makes it easier to forget self when we think like Christ. Sometimes things are bad. We think it's bad because we're thinking about self. There's a little girl and um, first grade, and they had a track and field day. And she won quite a few ribbons. Among them was a blue ribbon for first place. So later on that day, when she got home, the blue ribbon was missing. And her mom asked her, what happened to your blue ribbon for first place? The little girl says, well, there was this little boy that was there. He's crying because he didn't win first place. So I gave him my blue ribbon. Mom hugged her and told her how she thought it was a very generous thing for her little girl to do. And the daughter said, why not? After all, I know that I won it anyway. <laughs> he had the ribbon, but she had the victory. See, it's how we approach things in our thinking, amen? And so she realized that, hey, I won the race. You can't take that away from me. I may not have the ribbon, but I know. He may have the ribbon, but I have the victory. And in our life, guess what? We have the right kind of thinking, the right perspective, and allow God to help us to think the right way. God will help us. According to the passage in Romans 12 and 2, you will prove God's will in your life if you learn to forget self. You accomplish God's perfect will. Notice we prove his will, not our will. The only way to do his will, how many want to do God's will? Right? Well, how do I do that? Don't do your will. You ever let your will get in the way? Come on now, all of us, right? I understand this is a little diff different this morning, but this is some good teaching for you to help you. We have to get our will out. Well, I don't want to do that. That's the bottom line. I do not want to do this. Right? Because it requires something from us. That means you can't do what you want to do. Welcome to the world. Welcome to life. We have to do it God's way. And the best thing about it, when we walk uprightly and we do God's will, God's going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you. The irony is that the more we forget ourselves, the more fulfilled we find ourselves. When we are empty of self, then God can fill us with himself. The reason why some people don't have God in their life is because they're too full of themselves. 
is too full. At the basis of all sin, we find self. Self. What was it that caused Lucifer to rebel against God? Self. Pride. We don't like it when someone comes along and tells us that something contrary to what we want to do. And it's pride. We get our pride dented. Pride and self is a center of all sin. And and because we want to do what we want to do rather than doing what God says to do. Jesus, on the other hand, emptied or forgot self. And by doing so, he won our salvation. The life of faith is called to forget self and serve God and others. And ironically, those who forget self are the most self-fulfilled. Come to the instruments, please. They're the most self-fulfilled. And I want God's blessings for you in your life. And God wants to bless you. But we struggle with self. And I really believe that, that God gave me this message because it's a big struggle. I know we have plans, we have goals, we have dreams, we have desires. There's nothing wrong with that. But in doing so, get self out of the way and be filled with God. Because ultimately the goal is not what we do when we leave the military or, or what we do when you PCS or whatever the case may be. Ultimately, the goal is where are we going to spend eternity? And living for God is not hard. And you think that living for God, that, that you have no rights. We have all kinds of rights as the children of God. But we've got to get that selfish part of the world out of us and live the way God wants us to live. And in doing so, you'll be blessed beyond measure. And if you just begin to grasp what I'm trying to teach you and share with you this morning, it'll really be a blessing to you. Amen? As you bow your heads and as close your eyes in reverence to the Lord today, forget self. Father, I preach that which you laid upon my heart. And God, I realize this topic today might be a little bit different than normal. But God, help me not to be saturated with self. But God, help me to be saturated with you. God, help me to walk uprightly before you. And God, those that are here today, I pray, Lord, that you will help them. To look into their hearts and into their lives. And Lord, most of all, let them know that you love them and you care for them. And God, that you want to save them. And Lord, I ask you right now to draw them by your spirit to a place of prayer. To a place of introspection. And God, I thank you today for what you're going to do in the hearts and lives of men and women. And I give you the glory and the honor in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. The altars are open. Let's come right now. Let's slip out of those pews. Let's slip out of those pews right now and come to the Lord. Don't be afraid to come. Come on, just come on. Talk to Jesus. And let God be real to you today. There's a voice calling me from an old rugged tree, and it whispers.